If you're tired of applying to jobs where you know thousands of other people have also applied, we're going to cover some strategies today that you can use to find IT and cybersecurity jobs with a low number of applicants. This can greatly increase your chances of getting a response. Just imagine applying to a job that has 300 applicants versus a job that only has three applicants, for instance. And of course, before you start applying, I, I highly recommend you make sure your resume is as good as it can possibly be. Definitely check out this God tier resume video. I go over how to make a really nice resume that's easily readable by humans and ATS alike. Also check out this employability framework. I cover stuff that you need to care about when you're trying to apply to jobs, like how to be really highly employable to a broad range of employers. Really important video. So resume video, employability framework video. Watch those. So I'm gonna talk about three different things you can do to find and apply to jobs that have less applicants than usual. The first thing being you can apply to defense jobs or jobs that kind of have a weird job description or like a weird job title that people normally wouldn't search for and find. So for example, you can apply to jobs that require a security clearance, but sometimes the job will actually sponsor a clearance for you, which allows you to work in, you know, for defense contracts and work on working on defense systems, right? So in order to find those particular jobs, you can search um, ability to obtain a security like in quotes or ability to obtain in quotes like on indeed and a bunch of like defense jobs will come out and you'll notice some of them have a kind of weird job titles that you wouldn't think to search also i have this list here of job titles that have a, a bit of an unusual kind of unusual keyword that you wouldn't think to use to search i have a whole other video that i talk about this but you can look through this um, i'll put this spreadsheet in the description as well as another spreadsheet of like a hundred different job titles where you can kind of look through and see patterns patterns of like what might exist out there that you might not have thought to search if that makes sense. So yeah, that is the first part, just applying to jobs that people normally wouldn't apply to because they didn't know that they exist, basically. The second thing I might recommend doing, and you might think this is hard and you might think to write it off, but I, I don't recommend it. I, I recommend being open-minded and, and trying this. And this is applying to jobs nationwide, like if you need to go on site in like Nebraska or something like this. I highly recommend considering doing this, especially if you're trying to break into a field for the first time or get like a significant promotion, like you're trying to get into cybersecurity, right, for the first time, or you're trying to break into management, for example, for the first time. It's really, really worth it to, you know, consider making a move for six months and living in like Oklahoma or whatever for six months. And then you have that like solid thing on your resume and then you can go back to like LA or Seattle or wherever you're originally from. Um, I actually did this a couple times, like to get a security clearance, I, I went to Japan and took like a huge pay cut. I went from like, at the time, like 75K to 50K doing some like easy work just so I can get a security clearance in Japan. And when I, I broke into cybersecurity, I was actually like, got that job in Hawaii, right? I'm originally from uh, Seattle. So I, I recommend doing it. It's worth it if you can save up just a bit of money doing Uber or something like this or DoorDash and just consider moving. I have a, a whole video where I really talk about this in depth. The reason why this is so strong is because if you live in like a tech hub or something like this, or even if you don't, there's a lot of places that have jobs with very few applicants. For example, I went to LinkedIn and I searched cyber uh, on site uh, past 24 hours. And I just went to the first job that was not sponsored on the list. I don't think this is sponsored. It's not. And after one hour, it has 30 applicants in Seattle, this job that has the word cyber in the, the title. And then I did the same thing for Oklahoma. I just searched cyber um, on site past 24 hours. And I, I tried to, oh damn, this one's promoted. I couldn't find the, dang it. I couldn't find the one that wasn't promoted. But anyway, even though this one's promoted, it has only two applicants in the last two hours versus 30 applicants in the last one hour for Seattle. That's really crazy for me. So if you think about it, if you submit like, you know, 100 applications in a week, but you're submitting them to jobs in these kind of uh, innocuous or rural-ish areas that have, you know, sub 10 applicants versus applying like in Seattle and LA and like New York where there's like a bunch of tryhards and like hundreds of applicants, it's more likely you're gonna get response from the place with less applicants, right? Because they're probably they probably have a hard time finding talent. And then, you know, maybe you have to like suffer or whatever living in Oklahoma for six months or whatever the case may be. But you'll get life experience and more importantly, you'll get job experience. And I've taken advantage of this like a few times, like I said. So I highly recommend um, at least considering this because it, it can change your life faster than if you're just chilling out in L.A. for one year job hunting. You know, imagine you just get a job in like two months in like Nevada or something like this. So, yeah, just consider uh, like 
being open geographically. Uh, the third step, this is really straightforward and, and easy. You can just literally go to LinkedIn, for example, and filter for jobs with less than 10 applicants. I, I highly recommend doing this, highly recommend doing this, especially if you're applying in like metro areas, but you can also combine this like less than 10 applicants with um, applying with in like r rural non-tech hub areas, like filter for like, um, I don't know where somewhere that I don't know Georgia or something. I, I don't know like areas that don't, don't have a lot of IT jobs, but filter for like a non like mainstream area, and then filter for less than ten applicants, and that will increase your chances even more. And I know not all platforms can do this, where you feel you can filter by like you know less than ten applicants or whatever. But the next best thing is to filter for jobs um, that have been posted in the last twenty four hours and try to apply to them first, because like a lot of times. People will post a job and then they'll they'll get like a bunch of applicants, but they get overwhelmed. So they just kind of look at the first 10 and they end up picking somebody or at least contacting a few people from the first batch of applicants, if that makes sense. So try to be like one of the first people to apply. You can do this again by filtering for like, you know, latest jobs posted or like the last 24 or something like this. And those are the three reasons. I definitely recommend checking out my hands-on IT course. I deliver it through Course Careers. There's a theory section, a completely hands-on lab section where we do a bunch of stuff in the cloud in Azure. And then there is a job hunt section where we cover how to create your resume, portfolio, practice interviewing, and go through going through that whole job hunting process. The hands-on component is really good. Uh, it's an Azure Recover like help desk ticketing systems. We talk about VPNs. We go over Active Directory permissions, some networking labs and activities as well. It's just really good and thorough. It kind of laser focuses in on the stuff that's expected of those entry-level help desk people. A bunch of people have gone through the course already. I believe there's about 3,000 people in there now. And I have a bunch of interviews on my channel with graduates where they kind of talk about their experience and finding a job afterwards and stuff. So I have a whole bunch of free high quality practice exam questions on my company website. We have questions for A+, Network+, Security+. We're making questions for ITIL as well as CISSP. So definitely check those out, absolutely free, and you can just start practicing right away in your browser. So highly recommend checking that out. It's pretty high quality if you're thinking about changing your career or getting into IT or something. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it, and we will see you in the next video.